everyone, Ms. Patsy here at Castile Innovation Lab. We are continuing our reading in the booklet called Earth Changes, and today we will be studying volcanoes. This is one of our longer readings, so feel free to pause the video when you need a break. Get your booklet, a pencil, and a highlighter, and let's get started. At first glance, Naples appears to be like any other bustling European city. Tucked along the west coast of Italy, Naples has a picturesque bay to the west and a majestic mountain rising to the east. Look closer, however, and you will see that the nearby mountain is in fact Mount Vesuvius, a very large active volcano. When it erupted in 79 CE, it rained poisonous gases, rock, ash, and scalding hot lava down on the surrounding cities and their inhabitants. Now this paragraph describes Naples as a picturesque bay to the west and a majestic mountain rising to the east. Picturesque meaning visually attractive and majestic meaning impressive beauty or dignity. I circled however, because if you remember from past readings, however means that there's a contrast or twist in the story. Because the mountain is Mount Vesuvius, a large active volcano, and that in 79 CE, which means common era, or more than 2000 years ago, erupted poisonous gas, rock, ash, and lava down on the nearby city and its people. What causes violent volcanic eruptions like this? The answer lies deep within the earth. Paragraph two wants you to ponder what causes violent volcanic eruptions like this and hints about the answer. The pictures below show where in Italy Mount Vesuvius is located and what it looked like during an eruption in 1944. Earth's layers. The surface of Earth is always changing because of its structure. Earth is made up of four different layers, the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and inner core. The crust or solid outer shell is the thinnest of the four layers and it is the one we live on. The crust is formed from giant slabs or plates of rock. These plates fit together like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Together, they float on another layer called the mantle. Paragraph three, I highlighted, Earth is made up of four different layers, the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and inner core, because this information is what's typically on a test. I also highlighted, the crust is formed from giant slabs or plates of rock those are also called tectonic plates, and I circled float to remind me that they could move at any time. Above is a picture of the Earth's layers. The mantle is a layer that surrounds Earth's core or center. It's about 2,900 kilometers deep or 1,800 miles. The mantle is divided into two sections. The up upper mantle is composed of cold, dense rock. The lower mantle is made of partially molten rock that flows. This is the area that causes the shifting of the tectonic plates just below Earth's surface, creating volcanoes and earthquakes. Paragraph four also has some important information, such as the mantle is 2,900 kilometers or 1,800 miles deep. And the mantle is made up of an upper mantle and a lower mantle. And that is what causes the movement of the tectonic plates. Remember we learned that the movement of tectonic plates is what causes earthquakes in our previous readings. And now we learn that their movement also causes volcanoes. The next layer is Earth's outer core, which is made up of very hot liquid or molten lava. The outer core is about 4,800 kilometers or 3,000 miles beneath the surface of Earth. The inner core is even deeper. It is a solid ball made of metals. Paragraph five tells us how deep the outer core and the inner core is. And that the outer core is made out of molten lava, which is liquid, but the inner core is a solid ball of metals. The heat and pressure inside Earth are so great that solid rock is constantly melting and forming liquid magma. Because the liquid magma is lighter than solid rock, the magma rises and the solid rock sinks. 
Some magma cools as it rises, becoming solid rock and sinking again. Other magma remains liquid and collects in underground chambers. When the heat and pressure build in these chambers, the magma is pushed through cracks in Earth's surface. The result is a volcanic eruption. Magma that has erupted through cracks in Earth's crust is called lava. Paragraph six tells us that when heat and pressure build in chambers in a volcano, the magma is pushed through cracks in the Earth's surface, and that is called a volcanic eruption. This picture shows us the chambers, tubes, and pipes within a volcano. Magma rises up. Some magma goes out of the top, which helps form a cone on the top, and some of the magma escapes through the side vents. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, there are seven major plates on Earth, subdivided into smaller plates. As these plates float, they slowly slide past each other, spread apart, or collide. Where two plates meet is called a plate boundary. Most volcanoes occur at plate boundaries. Vesuvius, for example, is part of a line of volcanoes that formed over the boundary between African and Eurasian plates. Some volcanoes, however, occur at the interior of plates. These spots are thought to be especially hot regions in Earth's mantle that spew magma onto Earth's surface. These areas are called hot spots. Pico de Fogo, for example, sits on the African plate and is therefore considered a hot spot volcano. Hot spots can create entire chains of islands like those forming the United States of Hawaii. In paragraph seven, I highlighted that there are seven major plates on Earth because I thought that was an interesting fact. It, paragraph seven also discusses how some volcanoes are formed where one tectonic plate meets another, which is the definition of a plate boundary. I also highlighted Mount Vesuvius formed at the plate boundary between the African and Eurasian plates. And I circled, however, because that means that there is going to be a contrast. Some volcanoes form in the interior of a tectonic plate, meaning instead of two plates colliding or separating to form a volcano, a volcano forms somewhere within the tectonic plate, where the lava collects under the Earth's surface to form a hot spot. This picture shows a picture of Pico de Fogo, a hot spot volcano that erupted in 1995. Now here, I wanted to do a demonstration to show you the difference between a plate boundary volcano and a hot spot volcano. So imagine these are two tectonic plates and they are hitting each other and forming a volcano. And the volcano erupts between the two plates, spewing out lava. Now, that is a plate boundary volcano. Here are two plates, here are the boundaries, and the two boundaries where they rub and they bump is where the volcano erupts. The other is a hot spot volcano which is what formed the Hawaiian Islands. Now pretend that our flask of red fluid is hot lava, a hot spot underneath the Earth's surface. Now the way the Hawaiian Islands were formed, the plate moved, but the hot spot stayed in one place. Therefore, when it was in this location, the hot spot would erupt here. and form an island. And then the tectonic plate would move a little further down and another hot, another volcano would form where the hot spot is currently. And then the plate would move a little bit more and a new volcano would form. Move a little more until the plate passed over the hot spot, but it formed a chain of islands. Volcanoes can be found on land and along the ocean floor. 
Volcanic eruptions on land can create mountains or form craters that become lakes. Volcanic eruptions underwater may cause a sea or lake to boil. Deep sea eruptions can also form islands over time. Paragraph eight shows us examples of how volcanoes are not always destructive, but can also be constructive earth changing events. Some volcanoes are dormant or sleeping. That means they haven't erupted for a long time. Others are extinct and will never erupt again. Volcanoes that are erupting now or have erupted in recent times, such as Vesuvius or Fogo, are referred to as active volcanoes. So I circled dormant, which means sleeping, extinct, which means never erupting again, and active erupting now or recently, because those are the three um, forms of volcanoes that um, I need to know. Paragraph 10. Today, Earth has about 1,500 active volcanoes on dry land. Another 10,000 volcanoes can be found along the ocean floor. Paragraph 10 provides some very interesting facts. Did you know that there were 10,000 volcanoes on the ocean floor? Most volcanic activity happens along the boundary of the Pacific Plate. Scientists call this circle beneath the Pacific Ocean the Ring of Fire. It is most active because the Pacific Plate is huge. When it collides with other plates, the edges of the other plates buckle and compress. The result is a higher rate of earthquakes and volcanoes. I highlighted in paragraph 11 that most volcanic activity happens along the boundary of the Pacific Plate. Because the Pacific Plate is so huge, whenever it moves and collides with other plates, the other plates buckle and compress, causing volcanoes around the tectonic plate, which is why they call the area beneath the Pacific Ocean the Ring of Fire. Now let's pretend that these are our tectonic plates. The one in the center is the Pacific Plate, and the ones around are the um, other plates that surround the Pacific Plate. Now, every time a, another plate rubs against the Pacific plate, a volcano erupts in that area. And say, for instance, this one bumps into that area. Another volcano erupts. And this one bumps into that area. Another volcano erupts. And this bumps into that area another volcano erupts. And this bumps into this area of the plate and another volcano erupts. And this plate bumps into this area and another volcano erupts. And this is why the Pacific plate is known as the ring of fire. The picture below paragraph 11 shows a lake that formed in a crater of a volcano in Indonesia. Depending on the gases from the volcano, they make the lake appear green, blue, black, or red. The most famous volcanic eruption in history occurred at Mount Vesuvius in Italy in 79 CE. Pompeii and two neighboring towns were wiped out within just a few hours. As many as 16,000 people were believed to have died as their homes were buried under layers of rock and ash. The eruption sealed the region as if in a time capsule for more than 1,700 years. It wasn't until the 18th century that archaeologists uncovered the lost cities again. They found people and their pets preserved in volcanic ash in the exact positions they were in when they died. Also preserved were the remains of homes, fountains, and a theater. Even the fresco paintings decorating some walls were preserved. We have learned much more about this ancient time from uncovering Pompeii than we have from other cities that aged normally. Paragraph 12 says that Mount Vesuvius is the most famous volcanic eruption in history because it wiped out the city of Pompeii and two other towns. It literally buried them alive under layers of rock and ash. The city was not found until 1,700 years later and archeologists found the people and their possessions preserved in ash. 
You can even see some of the artifacts on display at museums. This is a picture of one of the streets in Pompeii that they uncovered. Most rocks that erupt from Vesuvius are andesite, a type of volcanic rock that creates explosive eruptions. This makes Vesuvius an especially dangerous and unpredictable volcano. According to a geologist at the Field Museum in Chicago, when those kinds of volcanoes erupt, they tend to erupt explosively. The huge explosions create columns of gas, ash, and rock that can rise dozens of kilometers into the atmosphere. In paragraph 13, I highlighted the sentence that most rocks that erupt from Vesuvius are andesite, which is a volcanic rock that creates explosive eruptions. I also underline that this makes Vesuvius an especially dangerous and unpredictable volcano. The kind of eruption that occurred on Mount Vesuvius is described as Plinian, named for Pliny the Elder, a Roman nobleman who died as a result of the 79 CE volcano eruption. More recently, another Plinian eruption occurred in the Philippines. Mount Pinatubo had not had any major activity for 500 years, but in the spring of 1991, there were minor eruptions and earthquakes. Scientists took these signs that Mount Pinatubo might erupt. So the government ordered an evacuation of about 66,000 people. Then on June 15, 1991, Mount Pinatubo did erupt. More than 850 people died. The death toll would have been much higher without the evacuation plan. In paragraph 14, I highlighted the kind of eruptions that occurred on Mount Vesuvius is described as Plinian because I thought that that was very important information. And it was named after a Roman nobleman named Pliny the Elder, who died because of the eruption in 79 CE. I also underline Mount Pinatubo, since that is another volcano that we are learning about. In the spring of 1991, Mount Pinatubo started having minor eruptions and earthquakes. Thankfully, the scientists took the warnings that this could mean that a major eruption was coming and the government evacuated 60,000 people from the area. And a couple of months later, Mount Pinatubo did erupt and killed 850 people. It would have been much worse if the people weren't evacuated earlier. So two examples of Plinian eruptions are Mount Vesuvius and Mount Pinatubo. And a Plinian eruption is a volcanic eruption where a narrow stream of gas and ash is violently ejected from a, a volcano several miles high. This is a picture of a Plinian eruption named after a Roman nobleman, Pliny the Elder, who died during the 79 CE eruption of Mount Vesuvius. His nephew, Pliny the Younger, wrote a description of the blast and he compared it to a pine tree for it rose to a great height on a sort of a trunk and then split off into branches. Notice the huge column of ash and gases. Living in volcanic regions. When volcanoes do erupt, they can swiftly destroy habitats, towns, and their inhabitants. They can change the landscape, knocking down trees and moving land. They can create avalanches and mud flows, which can be devastating. Eruptions have turned daylight skies to night. Some effects of volcanoes can be far reaching. Volcanic ash clouds can affect global weather patterns. Paragraph 15 describes how destructive volcanoes can be, not only to people in towns, but all around the world by affecting weather patterns. These pictures above show some of its destructiveness. Scientists will continue to study volcanoes and their effects. In the meantime, cities near some volcanoes are improving their evacuation plans and teaching volcano safety. Some are banning new construction in hazardous areas. New satellite technology allows scientists to monitor and measure plate shifts and volcanic activity from outer space. This could allow scientists to better predict volcanic eruptions in the future. Paragraph 16 tells us, that scientists are still studying volcanoes and their effects. They wanna protect people from the effects of volcanoes by improving the evacuation plans and teaching volcano safety. 
They don't allow construction of new homes near, nearest to the volcano. And new satellite technology is allowing scientists to monitor plate shifts and volcanic activity from space, which will hopefully allow scientists to predict eruptions in the future. I hope you enjoyed the reading for today. Remember when annotating not to highlight too much, just the main idea. Also, remember to put important words in the margins. And if you don't know what they mean, look them up because they might be on the test. I'll see you next time.